Hey guys, I'm going to continue working today with the Wizomet Super Iridium Extra Stainless. Put that inside the car of Christopher Bradley. This is an open comb, of course, and it's the C plate. Brush is the Omega. I believe it's an A0266. That, that order of numbers just seems so random to me that I... It just has it stuck in my brain. You can check the title of the video or the description of the video for uh, to be sure. And the soap for today is Summer Storm. Chiseled face makes a good soap base. It's a, this is the older one. And they just came out with a newer one, the Silk Tallow, which is really, really good. The old one is no slouch, but it's not, it's not great. However, the scents, and I've said this about every time I've used chiseled face, perhaps. The performance of this older base is good. It does a great job. It's just not luxurious, that kind of thing. But the scents that he puts out are terrific. And so uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's, I think I tried Summer Storm a long time ago as a test uh, sample. And I got it recently in a bulk purchase and so I'm looking forward to trying it again. Here's the aftershave. I think last time I was evaluating it, I actually evaluated it blind without the sample tub, you know, without the benefit of knowing the description or anything like that. And, uh, and it just didn't, uh, didn't really match my view back then of maybe a summer storm and what it should be. Uh, on the description it says earth, rain, pine, and moss. So let's just see what, how much of that comes out. If too much pine is in it, I'm probably going to pass it on to somebody else. I'm just not a pine fan. All right, so I'm going to get my face wet, and then, uh, uh, then we'll load up. All right. So we'll take this little Omega. The other Omegas that I've tried have been very stiff in the bristle department. This guy's the opposite. He's got almost too much flop, but he's very soft, very comfortable. All right, let's do a 30 second load. Started right at 31. This pipe looks like it hasn't been used in a little bit, so 30 seconds might be good. So that's 15, you know, how about just a 20 second load. And there we go, that's a 20. I discovered that with my tests with um, Midnight Stag that I just uh, needed about a 10. Well, but that was with a different brush. Let's go ahead and put 10 more seconds on it just to be on the safe side. There we go. Okay. And indeed, the leather that it's building does look a little richer. So we had, that had the bubbly stuff come off pretty early, and that's normal. Just uh, There's not really much soap in that, so feel free to wash that down the drain if you want. Some soaps, you don't want to take that bubbly stuff and put it in your lather bowl because it, you have to beat those bubbles down. Uh, let's see, I'm going to rinse the uh, tub here, so let me pause just so you don't hear my noisy faucet. All right, now this Wizomet looks just like the blade of a pole silver. It's got the same uh, labeling. Neither one of them say their actual brand name. Maybe that was on purpose. So some do say that it's the same blade. I don't know. I know that uh, I like the pole silver in many razors, and I, the same thing goes with the Wizomet. I've tried it in several razors, and it seems to do pretty well. So here's the uh, car of Christopher Bradley assembly. Also, I just was looking at that at the suds coming off the side of the tub before I rinsed it off. And I thought that could be a, a pre-shave. And so that's why my face is a little wet and got a little, got a few suds on it. I took the extra that was around the tub, just put it on my face, rubbed it in, worked it in, then rinsed it off. And so maybe that's going to help to dispel some of the natural oils that are on my face, help me to get a better first pass. We have had 12 shaves on this Wizomet, it looks like. So 13 is today. Now we can 
to start working up the ladder. So if you're new, loading in our terminology usually, I believe this is pretty universal among wet shavers uh, generally. Loading refers to not what I'm doing now, this is more building or working up the lather. Loading refers to what I was doing with the actual soap tub where I'm moving, I'm getting some soap onto the brush. It's almost always done with a moist brush, uh, various levels. Some people like to come at the soap with a very wet brush. Nothing wrong with that at all. Some people like to come at it with a lightly wet brush like I do. Just any variation that you find that makes you happy is good. Uh, and I've, all, I've said many times, uh, coming at it with a wetter brush may shortcut you and get you your, your best lather quicker. I put a teaspoon in and boy, it looks like it was absorbed right away. Not too much mixing required there, so I'll put another teaspoon in. So the other omegas that I have that are a lot more firm, prickly, not soft than this brush, most of them are un, they seem to be unbleached or undyed. This one has that black band of hair. And so that means it's been treated, you know, in some way. And, uh, and so you might think, well, maybe that is how you can tell the soft omegas from the firm ones. Well, I do have a travel omega brush that is banded. It's dyed like this and it is harsh. It is, it's taken a lot of sample lathers and it's not come close to being anywhere near the softness and the pliability of the flex of this guy. So I don't know if there's any rhyme or reason to it. I don't even know if it's per model. Like if this is, if I remembered correctly, and this is the 80266, maybe can we, can we say that all 80266s are comfy like this? Or does it just depend on the batch of Omega hair that's used? I, I don't know that. So I just added a fourth teaspoon. I probably didn't need to load that last 10 seconds. You gotta see me glisten because it's warm here. AKA sweat. Now, as I recall, I don't need to run this lather as, as wet as I usually do. Yeah, let's just, uh, maybe a little bit more water and then we'll go with this. That's five teaspoons. Let's just shave with that. Got a nice scent to it. So was that earth? Yeah, I can kind of get that. Earth, rain, pine, and moss. I guess they're going for the uh, kind of a foresty kind of storm. I don't really get the rain. I think I get a little bit of the pine, but pleasantly. I don't get a lot of it. I'm like, I'm glad about that. I don't really know the moss smell very much. Yeah, this lather's looking good. Okay, first pass. This is so funny because I have used Omegas. I had the, I have the 20102, which is still, it's not soft. Sometimes it's touch prickly, sometimes it's not. So it's right there on the borderline. I had the one, 0098, which is that black handled uh, 
looks like a very ergonomic barber type handle and it has a long loft and it the loft was just so long that I even if it softened up and it wasn't it was still quite prickly after 15 uses something like that I just felt that even if I gave it more time and indeed I did read that some people were saying that it, it could take a, a couple of years of uses before that brush got soft I just figured why in the world with Samogs and Zeniths available would I want to spend that much time to get to soft when Samogs and Zenith are already there Added a little bit of water and that improved this lather's creaminess a lot. I guess I didn't quite have enough in there. So now we've got six teaspoons in that lather. Looks like I'll have plenty to do the job. And so I decided even if it even if I did take the time to get that Omega brush in good shape, soften up the tips, that sort of thing. The long loft was just too much, and there were some, sm especially with smaller soap tubs, the long loft was ca would cause it to just have this kind of motion with the center of the tips, you know, staying in one spot in the soap tub because there was so much lag. And I didn't enjoy that. That wasn't fun. And then I also was feeling that on my face a little bit. So I said, nah, we'll take this one out of the rotation. I may use it every once in a while, maybe. But we'll take it out of the bore rotation. And see if we can find something else. And that's when the 20102 came in. Now, long before that, I had the 10, I had the, uh, the Pro 48, which has even longer bristles. And at first... When it was a newer brush, oh, this shaves really well. No tugging at all. You do feel the, you do hear the hairs being cut, but you don't really feel the blade edge. This is just wonderful. I'm keeping it light. I'm holding the razor very lightly. This is a different stroke I usually do on my cheeks right there but you know as long as you hold it light and take your time you know with your with your technique then you'll be good most of the with at least with beard types of mine just slicing through this hair really well you do hear and, and feel something but it's just so comfortable Very nice glide protection from this soap, it looks like. And we have plenty. Let's integrate that last uh, half teaspoon that I poured in once I realized I was adding water to my first pass. I like the scent quite a bit. Yeah, I think I can get the rain now. And I get a little bit of woods. Yeah, and I get a little bit of earth too. I think maybe the rain is the strongest note. Then maybe the earth, and then the, the woody notes. Cross grain now, since that first one went so nicely. And this, I hear a little bit of cutting, but guys, it's just so smooth. This is a really good razor and base plate setting for this blade, at least for my skin. Remember, as we're trying out all these blades, your 
results may be very different from mine if your skin and hair, soap technique, type of brush, razor, pressure technique in your shaving, to the degree that all those things differ from me, so can your experience. The blades are very subjective. The Wizomet looks like a good razor for me across many, a good blade for me across many razors. And so hopefully it will be for you if you choose to try them out, but there's unfortunately no guarantee. I can't stand sharks and bicks. But there are people out there, that is their go-to blade. Now, you know what? Maybe I need to retry the sharks because I, I did try those out early on in my journey. The technique wasn't as good. Who knows? They might be better for me now. Let's be a fair about it, right? Gripping in the center of the razor is how I like to do it because it helps me to keep the razor in balance. I can let the grip it by the fulcrum there as if it were a seesaw and then it can go over the surface of the skin at its own pace and it has room to flex and move instead of me holding a wide grip and move and, and then there's no room for the, the head to to move like that and so therefore if it can move like that then my my thought is that it can glide over the surface of my skin instead of digging in and causing irritation if I happen to come up against a bump that I didn't plan for To get a little bit of lather here and there, and you can keep kind of working on an area if it needs it. This is one of the better chiseled face lathers that I've done. I don't know if this soap just had a slightly different formulation than some of my other chiseled face soaps, but man, it was a great lather. In the beginning, I could have uh, stopped adding water. Kind of when I did, I could have not added any extra and had a creamy, really rich, creamy lather. Uh, if you want to go that way, then it's, it's there for you. And this is a little on the wetter side. I think I managed to get to pretty much a perfect state here. It's just, look how wet that is. Elastic. And it felt great on my face. Excellent glide. The smoothness on during the rinses was tremendous. So it's a little sometimes on the, the airy, micro bubbly side, but at least on your face, you don't feel that. It just feels good. So I'm a fan of this scent. I could definitely, I'm gonna keep this around. I'm glad that this came in that uh, bulk purchase that I made because I, I had kind of dismissed it early on. This is a good scent. I'm going to enjoy this for a good long while. So it's hot here. So why don't I put on some of this Summer Storm Aftershave. And I believe it has a touch of menthol in it. But menthol doesn't usually make me feel cooler. It kind of burns. But let's just see. A little bit of stinging indicating maybe some areas where I cut maybe a little too hastily. Uh, a couple small ones down here and one up on my cheek. But then those, that's pretty much gone now. So that didn't take too long did it, to clear up. Now I feel a little bit of the burning. Uh, but the good thing is I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy this scent now for a couple of hours uh, thanks to the aftershave. So even if I don't care for the the burning feeling too much. 
it'll be all right. So I've got excess lather. Didn't need probably that extra 10 seconds. I've probably got three passes of lather in here easily. So, uh, yeah, there we go. I'm going to start cleaning up and I'll see you in a bit. So I think this brush now has had about 15 shaves and you can see how he's not expanding very much. He's returning back to his normal shape pretty, uh, pretty well. Uh, we do have a few outliers and so maybe that tells us that it will gradually expand. It's a comfortable brush. It's not, it's almost like a Smoog, uh, but a longer Smoog where it, you don't feel a lot of density, but you feel the softness, you feel, uh, and you feel a lot of space between the hairs, uh, and it's a, it's a light feeling. And so some people are going to like that a lot. I like a lot of my Smoogs. Uh, this is kind of the Omega, the Omega that is feeling more like a Smoog. We'll see how that goes as the tips split more and more. That'll be interesting to see how, how that develops. But right now it's comfortable. I, I think I like my Smogs just a little better than it, but uh, I'm glad to have it as a part of my rotation because it's a different kind of Omega than the other three or so that I've tried. Well guys, you can see how humid it is in here. Thanks to my shaving, no doubt. And so when I pause you, I turn the fan on sometimes. Just wanted to mention that this is my hand polished carve razor. The Brasso is a, a little bit more abrasive than the Mother's Chrome Polish that I initially polished this with. And so I may keep working on it with Brasso to get a little bit extra shine out of it, but I'm really happy with it either way. But it is a hand polished version. I also polished the Maybe this is called a ferrule, I don't know, and the end, but I didn't polish the base plate. So if you want to know what the bead blasted original surface looks like, and it's got a little bit of a patina to it, but that's what the, the matte surface looks like on that. So I've dried the razor, rinsed it out. I think we're good to go. In summation, I really enjoyed this scent. Going to keep it around. The razor and blade combo was excellent. Um, so how close did we end up getting? That's really good. Really good. I mainly just see some tips. I don't really think I see any length on any of the hairs. And that is a superb shave for me. Since in that area, the hair goes this way. And I don't, I can't because of the skin and whatever. Uh, maybe the hair lays too close to the skin, but I can't go against the grain. In, in my neck, otherwise it gets it gets cut up uh, and irritation at the very least. So uh, that's a really good result for me in terms of closeness. A very comfortable little Omega, enjoyed using him again. So that's a good shave overall, very good shave. I hope there was something in this one that's gonna help you out. I'm definitely glad to bring the Summer Storm scent to my channel so that people can have it as a reference just in case they're curious. And this is his older base, it's not the Silk Tallow, and it's still a very good base. I wasn't, wouldn't have to hesitate about buying some of this soap, especially, you know, around the $13 price point, which is where I think he puts his original base. Uh, tremendous stuff. Amazing scents from Chiseled Face as usual. You guys take care. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves.